Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today, we are looking at a really cool, really unique program. It is called Sound Particles. And the best way I can describe this is basically it is to 3D rendering for audio. So instead of rendering pixels, you're rendering sounds in 3D scapes. Really cool idea. And by the way, if you are very timely in terms of watching this, it's also 50% off on all products thanks to Black Friday slash Cyber Monday deal. So if you're watching this as I record it, hey, good for you. You can get this guy for cheap if you are impressed. The other really cool thing here is they have a fully functional, completely unlimited demo out there. They trust you to not pirate their software. Well, plus they also put a thumbnail in the encoded audio so they can tell that you stole it. But but you can fully test drive this thing. I love that they took that approach. And as you can see here, it has been used in a number of big budget products. Um, Independence Day, Magnificent Seven, The Smurfs, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, The Great Wall, um, Assassin's Creed Origins, Alita Battle Angel, and so on. So this guy has definitely been used in a number of environments. And yeah, let's just jump in, take a look at it. And when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the details about Sound Particles itself. But let's just, let's start with a hands-on demo. So I gotta warn you right up front, I am incompetent with this kind of stuff, and I don't really have the right kind of sound effects to demonstrate this well. Because if you think about it, you're basically creating 3D particle systems of sound. So you want to sound to be just that sound. So you want to have a sound of a bullet, you want just the bullet. Nothing about its environment, your conversation, you want just the conversation, none of the ambient environment. So I'm going to showcase this with some really crappy sound effects, just so you're aware of that. So you start here, you get your new project, you have a number of different options for how you can set it up. Uh, we're going to stick with this simple project. It basically is going to create a single emitter in our scene and a single microphone. On the topic of microphones, you have a number of different options here. You could create it for stereos, it's just X and Y channel. Channel, which on this video to keep things simple is exactly what I'm going to do. You can also record it as mono or omnidirectional. You can record it in 5.1, 7.1, Dolby Atmos or Oro 3D, which apparently is 11.1 channel surround sound. And we'll just go ahead and create that. So what we got, we've got our world here, I guess you could say. Here's a perspective view of our world. Over here, we've got a top-down view of our world. We're at the center point. You'll notice we have a microphone for us. There's two sets of arrows coming off of that. That is telling us the orientation of our microphone. We've got a 90 degree view. You can see those details up over here. So if we want to change that out, we could we can change the range of our microphone. We can also even change our type completely. So instead of a cardioid microphone, we can have a hyper, um, a figure of eight or an omni microphone to actually pick up sounds in all directions. So the positional sound is going to make a lot of sense in a second. Once again, you've also got different options for how to um, encode the output. I'm gonna stick with the defaults. You've also got control over the position in 3D space of this guy, including everything you'd wanna do. And you got a number of stems here to capture from. So at this point in time, you'll see here, we have a single particle emitter in our world and you've got control over your hardware down here. So we've got that particle system, it is right here. Now you can see we've got this little timeline here. Uh, we're zoomed in on, you'll notice as I scroll through it, we've got different particles in 3D space. They're not doing a whole lot, but let's go ahead and actually, so we got our single particle to start with. You'll notice up here, we've got a particle emitter. It's gonna do 10 particles a second of duration, three seconds each. And we've got audio files that we attach. Those are the you know, little clips that are gonna play as audio um, sound particles. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to pick seagulls. We're gonna do like a city by a lake scene here. So we got our seagull effect here. We're gonna do way less than 10 per second. We're gonna actually do one per second and we're gonna make this last for 30 seconds. So there you saw, we stretched out there our particle system effect. We've got more control over how it's positioned or whatever. We can actually, this is the center point of our particle emitter that where our audio is going to come out of. I'm gonna keep it pretty centralized, a little bit off to the, actually we'll just keep it dead center. Once again, your mic is here, your particle system is here. Okay, so over time we start playing it. I'm gonna go ahead and play it now. So. I got it quiet on my end so I don't double capture it. Here you can see we've got a number of seagulls off and around in our world. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so that is pretty simple. So you can set up a bunch of particles to kind of play as you wish. Now what we can also do is set up uh, you know, permanent sounds, something that either repeats or is constant in the background or in the environment. So for example, let's say we have a lake. I can add that as an audio track. Audio track is selected over here. We attach an audio file to it and we will make this one lake. This is uh, basically this. 
Okay, so now we have a little bit of a constant lake effect here for the duration of the audio track. If we wanted to, we'd have to edit it out or we could duplicate it or we could have multiple channels of it, whatever. But we'll just stick with the 50 second timeline that matches the length of this particular file. Now we play those two together. We have our lake and we'll have our seagulls. They're a little quiet right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change out my seagulls a little bit. Let's pause that. And what we can do, do is come do do. Uh, so we can come down here to the audio modifier. So we're gonna go ahead here. We're gonna add a random amount of gain so they don't all come in at the same volume. And we can also come in down here. We're gonna randomly change the EQ on them. And then we are going to do audio. What was the other one? I like a delay, random delays. All right, so we're gonna delay them a little bit too. For each one of those settings, by the way, there's a set of settings you can control over down here for that setting. We've also got a little bit of control over the position. We can have the particles, we can change where they are, we can change the velocity of those particles, etc. So now we'll go ahead and play that. So there's one of my birds. You can see where the birds are flying around. Out and about. Here, let's, let's up. There. So now we've got our seagulls in the world. We can also change how far around they fly. So we, we can set here, so we can bring them in closer to us. Let's set that to five meters. You're going to notice down here, one of these squares is now currently at two meter scale. So we have our permanent audio and we have our flock of seagulls flying around. So now we're going to actually showcase one of the things that's really cool for positional audio. So right now our lake is here. Our microphone is here. So let's go back to our lake and we can position it. Right hand side, left hand side, immediately behind the microphone, directly behind the microphone, behind the microphone a little to the right. So let's pretend our lake is over here to the right. So now we're gonna continue and add some more sounds into our environment. Let's go ahead and create another particle system, like so. And we can add another particle emitter. And we can name these, by the way, so you actually know what you're doing. We'll call this one crowd noises, like so. And we'll drop that one down. That's gonna be one, that's gonna be 120. And let's bring in our audio file, so I've got two sets of just ambient talks or conversations going on. And again, we'll throw them. Yeah, we'll add velocity on that one. We'll move these so that the city was over here somewhere. We can delay it so it doesn't start immediately. So we'll start that one two seconds in. We've also got control over how they should be positioned. So we'll set these to go in a rectangular pattern. Um, I think I need to move you again. So let's advance the timeline a little bit. So there you can see there are our particles coming out in a very not rectangular pattern. I'm not 100% certain what's going on there, but okay. So we're we're huge scale at this point in time. So let's let's find out why. I'm not sure why that scaled down. So let's put this back to zero. Again, I am not incredibly competent with this particular program, so that's one of those things to keep in mind. Let's drop that down so we can get in here, and let's just move this a little bit over to the side. So I'm not sure how to control the scale there. Anyway, so we got, we've got these controls coming to our side there. Straight line velocity. I think our velocity messed things up. I'm going to drop the velocity out. Yeah, it's the velocity messing things up. All right, so we bring those in. So there you can see we've got all of our crowd particles kind of coming off to our left. Uh, one particle per second, two second delay. All right, so let's drop in a little bit and let's see what happens. So we got our seagulls coming. We got our water there. You can sort of hear the crowd as I cre increase the volume up right there. Let's go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll do a randomized gain on that again. And we'll do randomized EQ. So we could also bring the crowd closer. But that, since it's random noise, that's going to sound a little bit weird. So you see you can have multiple different particles in a particle emitter. Uh, a couple other cool things you can do here is you can bring in... Um, video and CGI or 3D graph or 3D models to um, emit in your scene or to interact with your scene. You, you, unfortunately, you can't model fully in 3D, but you can bring in um, reference footage as well. So let me just come down here. So right there, we can actually bring in a video reference. So if you've got um, film or something that you want to match to, you can bring that in as well to synchronize to. I imagine that's how a lot of the, the motion pictures and such work on this one. And you kind of just keep doing that. You bring in particle emitters, particle groups, uh, constant static sounds like we saw there. And let's see what else do I have going on here. Uh, ambient traffic, horn honking. Yeah, let's throw some car door slamming and horn honking in like so. And we'll randomize those. Once again, that's way too many particles. And that's let's do 44 seconds. And we'll position those. Those again are off into the city side. 
we'll create those in a rectangular pattern over here. Okay, so we got some horn and honk noises coming in a little bit over to our side. All right, that might be a, a little bit too often, so let's do that. And let's random delay on that one. That's okay. I want it to be a little bit more distant. There you go. So we got our car door slamming and our horn effects kind of coming from the city off in the background. And you can see how you could layer all kinds of 3D sounds into different positions. And again, you could create as many of these emitters as you want. Uh, you could have literally, like, so right now I've got a very, very small amount of particles. Let's go down to our flock of seagulls. So I think that was particle emitter right, right here. And we could like literally just kill ourselves with the number of seagulls we've got going on here. There, we have a ton of seagulls now and I have a very, very, very unhappy computer. And I don't think we like the sound we're gonna get out of that anyways, but you get an idea of the, the number of particles you could potentially uh, make out of this uh, combination. And so you see, you can get some really complex systems going on. Now you're gonna notice at the bottom, my microphone here um, is saying unrendered at any particular time. When you're ready to go with this, you're going to want to render it and then once you've rendered the mic, you can go ahead and export your audio out. And you export your audio, see it says, uh, the microphone is not rendered. I'm not gonna render in this particular case, but you see how you can bring out the audio that you've got. You bring it out as WAV, uh, AIF or FLAC file formats, a lot of control over it. And then the cool thing here is I don't need to keep myself constrained to a single mic. If I really want to, I can keep adding more and more microphones into the scene, different areas. I can have them capture different stems or, or different particle systems within my environment and so on. So you can have, you can create your soundscape from a multiple of different uh, perspectives and so on. And yeah, that's done with the demonstration part. It's a really cool, unique program that I am not even slightly competent in and barely showing you the capabilities of, but uh, you get an idea of of what it is about, something completely different from any other 3D audio software that exists today. I agree with that completely. I use the concept of computer graphics, but for audio, each particle represents a 3D sound source instead of a 3D sound object and a virtual microphone that captures the, uh, the virtual sound of the particles. So you can see they've got them as various different jets. Like I said, you can have, um, you can bring video in that you could synchronize the, the particles to. Uh, so you could create 10,000 particles, spread them over a square mile, pick 50 war related sounds from your library, render the entire scene using virtual microphones. So like they said, if you've got a, um, a war scene and you've got good samples, better than what I've got. So if you had like AK-47, someone screaming, someone dying, a different kind of gunshot, a different kind of weapon, uh, the sound of tanks moving and so on, you could just dump thousands of particles out and it'll recreate the soundscape that's, uh, you know, that you would take forever to do yourself. Um, and it'll, it'll handle things like the Doppler effect, movement, position, and so on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, there's CGI integration, so you can import 3D information from animations or visual effects into it and attach sounds to 3D objects in order to make your mixer, your mix quicker than ever, real-time rendering, binaural monitoring. Again, I mentioned very, very briefly, there is the VR client, so you can go in there and like, um, you know, basically walk around your audio uh, thing, your, your audio scape, I guess is the word I'm looking for. And if you are interested, what does this thing cost? Well, this is also incredibly reasonable uh, because they scale it across the board. So if you're an indie developer, which I believe is just based on um, your income level, you're looking at $8.45 a month, Pro is $25 a month, or Team is $12.45 per month, and the Black Friday deal is on. I don't know if that Black Friday deal has actually been applied to that already. Let's go back to the very beginning here. Go to the Black Friday, start saving, and let's see the, so Sound Particles Indie starts at 69. So I think the price, those prices actually include the Black Friday pricing. But uh, if you are interested, that is Sound Particles. I will, of course, link everything relevant in the article down below. Again, it is a very unique, uh, one of a kind kind of program. I, I don't know that there's anything else out there like this, but if you know of another program that does this, I've, I've seen some plugins for things like, uh, I think there's a Maya plugin that does this where you can put 3D object sounds in. I think there might even be something for Blender. I need to look into that a little bit further. But for what it is, a standalone audio program for creating positional audio using particle systems, kind of a cool concept. So uh, that's Sound Particles. Let me know what you think, comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.